Hello, party people. Hey, this is our party people. This is the Fictionary team all coming in at once. So lovely. What's up? Hello, Christina. Hello to you. Yeah, so everybody, what's my word? Stephanie needs to hear my word. Somebody here must know it. Kindness makes the world around. Kindness. Yes. Everyone being kind. <laughs> That's it. That's our whole motto in this community. It's the most important thing in the community. And then comes writing and editing. But we start from a place of kindness. Writing and editing semantics. Yeah, that's right. I'm, <laughs> Stephanie, I'm still letting people in. We'll just give them a, a little minute here. Clearly, you're very popular. <laughs> awesome. Hi, Hi Stephanie. <laughs> Hello. Wait, I don't see the face of who just said hi. <laughs> <Let me pull laughs> <this up. laughs> Here, there we go. Hello, Art. Yes. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> hi. I'm one of your, I'm one of your followers. So. Hello. Well, it's good to see your face. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Oh, are you the one? Were you the friend who told me yesterday that you're going to be here today? No, that was probably someone else. But um, I had signed up. I was. I saw you in the fantasy group, which you did. Okay. Uh, about a week or so ago yeah okay because someone was like i'm gonna be there tomorrow and i was like yay come join me <laughs> yes yes well art is a very active member of our community and attends many of our events so i can't say i'm surprised you're here <laughs> <laughs> hi christine i just did a whole big uh, promotion for your group <gasps> what did you do <clears throat> in a wip school women in publishing yeah and we, we we just had a networking thing so i just pushed your group okay <laughs> oh, Alexa <laughs> Big Wharf. Yes, awesome. yes yes she's awesome yes she is so um, <gasps> yeah you. so you might be getting some new people i hope so i mean yes. we that we're uh somewhere between 1500 and 1600 community members now and i'm, yes. I'm so thrilled with that considering we started this last summer so you know, clearly there's an interest in a kind community. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm so glad I joined when oh. I did last year. Oh, so we are too. We are too. <laughs> Alrighty. So we're going to kick it off. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Christina Stanley. I'm the CEO of Fictionary. And we have kind of four things going in Fictionary. And one is this wonderful community that wouldn't be wonderful without any of you. It'd be very lonely. So I appreciate everybody being here. We also have software, so storyteller and story coach so for, for writers and editors. We have um, courses, and some of you know about the certification program that we're in the midst of running right now. And, um, What's our fourth one? I just forgot. Wait, what did I say? Shane, software, community. Is it events like these? <laughs> and events like these? <laughs> wow, that's terrible. It's my company. So there we are. Okay, everybody can panic. So um, just the one other thing I wanted to say for anyone who's interested in submitting their manuscript unpublished to the Fictionary Book of the Year Award, we have an event on Friday to talk about that award for you. And what it means to submit and what we're going to, you know, the whole process behind it. So we're super excited about that. So on that note, also super excited that Stephanie is here with us today. And she has a, she has a new word for me. She's going to talk about, which I'm not going to say yet. Um, so Shane, do you want to do the intro of Stephanie and then we'll hand it over to Stephanie? I sure do. One moment. Sorry, my computer decided to freeze then. That is always. Uh, welcome. So today we are joined by Stephanie Boba. I'm super excited because I've heard Stephanie speak at things before and she is incredible. So you are in for a treat today. Uh, so Stephanie is an Afro-Caribbean Christian, epic romanticy novelist, fantasy universe builder, educator and podcaster with big dreams, a big heart and novels that fill readers with awe, light 
and wonder. Now, that's a fantastic intro. And that said, Stephanie, I'm going to hand over to you. Yay. Hello, new friends. I love making new friends. So yay. Um, thank you to Christina and Shane for having me and Lisa, who you know brought us together. <clears throat> I'm really excited. First off, disclaimer, y'all. Um, Stephanie is not completely on her A game today. Okay. <laughs> I have been sick. So if you hear me sounding funny, charge it to the game. Just charge it to the game. Okay. Still going to give you guys my best today for how I write fantasy. Um, everyone, one thing I've learned. So I didn't do typically, you know, like um, presentations and stuff where there's like the fancy, this is who I am. This is what you should care what's coming out of my mouth. Totally took that out. Um, so what I will say is this, been reading my whole life. I've been writing for many, many years. Started writing for publishing in 2013. Started publishing in 2017. <clears throat> what I learned going from pantser to plotter and staying a plotter because panting y'all are a special breed of people you know what i mean like i just panting is not for me okay um what i learned in trying so many things is you've got to like find your thing and do that and so today the strategies that uh strategies the elements that i'll be talking about that's basically what i implement when i'm writing um, especially because I am coming from a universe perspective. I'm not just building one world. I'm building a universe with a bunch of worlds inside of it with way too much going on inside of that. Sometimes I lay down at night, at night and I'm like, why do you do this to yourself? Like nobody asked you to do this. Why did you commit to this? It's too late to do anything else now because everybody knows. So <laughs> it's too late to start over, right? Um, but these are just some of the things that I do to help me um, because I am a very visual person. Um, so if someone should, which is why I always have these like presentations, right? Because if I don't, if I can't see what's going on, I'm like, ah, and in one ear, out the other. Okay. <laughs> but if I can see it, I'm like, oh, I remember so-and-so. They had the like chickens on that one slide. Got it. Right. So <laughs> I have these for y'all. Um, can I one check with you? Oh, that's not me. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure that little PSA was it for me. Um, and so I'm going to talk about three different things that I do when I'm writing my fantasy that makes up the core of a solid novel, a solid story. Like readers walk away and they're like, they're either mad at me because I left them on a terrible cliffhanger that makes them want to punch me in the face. It's okay. <laughs> I make for it. I make up for it in the next book. <laughs> okay. Or they're super happy and they're like, oh my gosh, that was the best ending ever. It's even it, there's never an in-between. They're either just mad or they're super happy. <laughs> so, um, so I'm gonna dive into how to write fantasy. <clears throat> and I'm actually gonna minimize this so I can see most of my screen. Um, because I can't, there we go. And then y'all let me know in the chat if everything is good for you. You can see well, you can hear well. I am in the library. So if you hear noise, that's just people trying to study, you know? Um, but everything else is good. Making readers mad is part of the fun of writing, 1000%. And I take full pride in making them mad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I take full pride in making them mad. So the first thing I want to start off with is facts. Writing a page-turning novel, especially one in the fantasy genre, is actually easier than we think. Um, sometimes we can make fantasy this like big old thing that is too hard um, to do or too much to achieve. It's actually not that difficult. Um, I think when we look at your Narnias and your Tolkien's and um, Tolkien, like your um, lord of the rings stories or your game of thrones stories we see so much happening so especially if you're new to writing fantasy it can seem like a lot um but i do want to come out of the gate making sure that you know it's actually a lot easier to write a fantasy novel that your readers will genuinely love than you think matter of fact can y'all play in the chat um put a one if you have published before put a two if you've never published before. So if you're writing a novel right now, if you're writing a fantasy novel right now, it'll be the first one you um, are gonna publish, put a two. If you've already published fantasy, put a one. Okay, so we have a mixed crowd here. Cool, cool. 
Awesome. Or for all of my twos, I see a lot more twos than ones. For all of my twos, for all of my, I'm working on it and I'm getting there. There's hope for you. Look at that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is a lot of hope for you. Okay. It's actually a lot easier than you think. Um, and my job today is to make this as fun as possible while avoiding coughing fits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, to let you know some things to do to make your process easier for you. All right, so let's get started. Today, we're gonna discuss how to write um, page turning fantasy for that your readers won't get enough of. And so the three things that I'm gonna break down, which are, if you read my books, you'll see like these are the things that genuinely just stand out. The first thing is generate, generating creativity and imagination. Y'all, I, I cannot go into a new story, a new world, um, or even like a different part of that world. Like for example, I released The Court of Dreams and Stars this past December, and that was just in one kingdom in this entire planet. And so um, this year I'll be releasing another book from that world, but from a different kingdom. And so going into that kingdom, I have to start building up my creativity and imagination for that again. Um, it's almost like you're starting all over, just getting that flowing. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, creating relatable three-dimensional characters, um, characters that your readers are like, oh my gosh, that's my best friend in my head. Why would you put them through so much? We're going to talk about that. And then, of course, if you know anything about me, come on, guys, I've got to talk about world building. You know what I mean? gotta talk about world building so <clears throat> those are the three things that we're going to address today so the first is generating creativity and imagination i am also i have a mint in my mouth because necess ne <laughs> necessary okay um so we're talking about generating creativity and imagination first fantasy just isn't fantasy without building your creative well. And that comes through many different elements. You can read, you can watch films, you can travel. Like I know a lot of, um, several of my friends who have more Irish, Celtic mythology rooted books. They've got to Ireland for several weeks, if not for a few months. Um, some of them like live out there. And so they get ideals for their stories from real life you can do that uh, there are many many ways to generate your creative well here's one that i want to address okay so you can craft your own immersive fantasy novels your readers will simply adore you need to do one important thing which is storyboarding and now i want to know drop a one in the chat if you know what storyboarding is drop a two if you've never heard this term before who knows what storyboarding is? Drop it to you if you don't. Fantastic. Okay. I see it too, Sandra. I see you. I'm going to break it down for you. Anybody else do, does not know storyboarding as it pertains to writing fantasy? Got a couple tools. Okay, wonderful. But I'm glad a lot of y'all know what storyboarding is, period. Y'all gonna be storyboarding out here. Okay. <laughs> so what is a storyboard okay a storyboard is a physical or a digital graphic organizer that consists of illustrations images and videos curated in sequence for the purpose of pre-visualizing the scenes <clears throat> and sequences of a novel so the whole point of storyboarding is to be able to have something that you can put together that helps you visualize what you're about to create in your novel before you're even writing, okay? So that's what storyboarding is. This is actually something that was taken from the film industry because they create storyboards before they actually start the entire process of putting together a film from screenwriting, um, like directors, producers, all of them. Their first, one of their first steps is storyboarding, but we took it. <laughs> <laughs> we apply it to writing a novel. And so um, storyboards can be physical. If you prefer pen and paper, writing down your ideals. I am not a pen and paper girl. Can't do it. I have too much in my brain to just like only write it down on paper because then I would just have paper everywhere and that would drive me insane. So 
I am not a pen and paper girl. Um, however, storyboards can also be digital, which is me. <laughs> okay. Um, if you prefer having everything in one place online. Um, I'm a huge storyboarder digitally. I use Pinterest. Um, I store all of my stuff in Google. I am a huge Google spreadsheet person, as well as um, I use, I mean, sometimes I'll write out docs, but I really use just like, I have tons of spreadsheets with information. And then of course, all of the drive folders with you know images and all that. And then my Pinterest boards are laid out in very specific ways that develop the story visually for me because I Pinterest with a lot of intention when it comes to building out my books. So storyboarding, this is the term, like I mentioned before, typically used for film and media, but it is easy applied, easily applied to writing as well. And so if you're not storyboarding um, and you find yourself in a place where you're like, ah, oh, writer's block, ah, I don't have any ideas, ah, I don't know what else to do, you should probably storyboard. It will help you a lot. Storyboarding itself is a form of research, okay, simply just for a visual aspect. <clears throat> Remember, I mentioned that I'm highly visual, highly, highly visual. And so things like that help me because if I can see it, then I can see it. Does that make sense? Drop a one if that makes sense. If I can see it visually through a, a storyboard, then I can close my eyes and see, okay, this is what I need to write. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Okay, the purpose of storyboarding is to provide visual clarity for the novel you're working on, enabling, enabling you to create with ease. Okay, a lot of hiccups of fantasy honestly just sometimes has to do with not enough information, not enough ideas, not enough nuggets. Um, you can't visualize the weapons. You have no idea what the magic looks like. You have no idea what the magic does. You have no idea where they live. You have no idea where they like what they dress like. You don't know how they travel. Like a lot of that has to do with just lack of ideas. But if you source ideas and you put them together through a storyboard, that will help a lot of that, a lot of those problems. And then you're you don't ever have to come to a place where you're like, mm, I have writer's block you know writer's block i don't believe in it it's just a matter of you need to just generate more ideas so it helps you craft other world characters building new worlds it requires an incredible amount um, it requires an incredible amount of inspiration creativity and resources to draw from to avoid any writer's block the process just talked about that and then the greatest purpose of it is really just visually mapping um <laughs> i can't express <clears throat> pardon me excuse me guys I can't express um how many times a storyboard has helped me in terms of like piecing together how these kingdoms look especially if you have like an ice kingdom a desert kingdom a fire kingdom a water kingdom like you know a tropical amazon all these different kinds of things like where storyboarding has really helped me to be able to like oh okay okay, I see it now, I get it now, it makes sense now, just because, you know, you're sourcing a lot of imagery that is in line, alignment with that, okay? Now, two approaches, there are two approaches to storyboarding, and I will tell you what they are. The first one, you can approach storyboarding as a, I've used, Alan says, I've used PowerPoint to put together storyboards. Yes, that is awesome. I've actually never put together a storyboard through a PowerPoint. I might could try that though, to be honest with you. If like I want to have just like a one, like almost like a like a vision board kind of thing, where you have the one board and the other thing on it. <clears throat> I've never tried that before, but I am not opposed to trying it either. Um, I just get so I just have so much in my head that I'm like I need to go to Pinterest. I'm also a girl that just really likes Pinterest. <laughs> that's another thing too <laughs> i just really like pinterest um, yeah so there are two ways that you can storyboard that is as a plant as a panther or a plotter okay and so panthers just to clarify the term they are that's a really cool idea especially if you set it to inspiring music and put on presenter mode right before writing oh one thousand percent 
one thought, speaking of music, I'll talk about that after. That's a conversation for after the presentation. <laughs> Remind me. <clears throat> um, pantsers are writers who prefer to craft their novels while flying by the seat of their parents. If this is you, cool. Drop a one if you're a pantser. Drop a two if you're a plotter. Plotters do not do that. <laughs> okay. They need details in, in their novels up front. One if you're a pantser, two if you're a plotter. Uh, Christina says she's a planter. See, you're a special individual, aren't you? <laughs> For y'all who do both, I I don't understand y'all. So here's a funny story about the Court of Dreams and Stars. Um, I tried to pant it, y'all, because I was like, ah. So Christian right uh, Christian fantasy author here a lot of my stories they're they're biblically based biblically inspired or biblically themed right and so Court of Dreams and Stars is about Ruth and Boaz and um, if you don't know who that is it's basically a family they went to another country her, the sons the husband died the sons died the mom is gonna go back to her home country but her daughter is like and was like no I'm going with you and when she does long story short she ends up marrying like a prince in that area okay so uh court of dreams and stars <laughs> is based on that and i was like ah, i know that story i've read the book of ruth so many times i don't need an outline y'all 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 when i tell you this manuscript punched me in the face all the way through i was like i will never in the history of ever try to pants a novel again do you understand me <laughs> like i need to have an outline because i cannot get molly whopped by a manuscript like that again like it's insane uh, <clears throat> and so <laughs> like, it was so bad i mean it's good now i mean it's good now like you'll read it and have a great time um but that manuscript was boxing me every single day when I sat down to write, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> I will forever plot. <laughs> that said, when you're storyboarding as a pantser, um, you have that, <clears throat> that just means you have a board or a binder or just like one thing and like all of your inspiration is on that one thing. And everything is just scattered. Maybe there's some trees over here, some fire over here, some quotes over here. Everything is just in that one little thing, right? When you're storyboarding like a plotter, that means you have sections for things. You're structured, okay? <laughs> when you're storyboarding like a plotter, you have sections, maybe, okay, we have weapons over here. Like, what are all the weapons that we're going to use? And, okay, we have transportation vehicles over here. How are all the means of transportation? Oh, okay, these are all the schools. <clears throat> here are all the schools over here. Okay, this is the fashion of that culture. Here's all the fashion of culture. Here are all the monetary, like here are all the currencies of these worlds. And this is how, you know, this is the, geograph the geography of the world. And this is how it all functions. Like if you storyboard like a plotter, that's how it's gonna end up. Like different sections, in an organized fashion so that you can just see, oh, okay, these are all the ele different elements that go, that are gonna be a part of my world um, <clears throat> and that will help you. That's how I <laughs> storyboard, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because honey, I have tried to do the panting way. Cool child, mm-mm, mm-mm. <clears throat> it's not for me, but the Lord bless you if it is, okay? <laughs> so a lot of ones. <laughs> <laughs> number two um <clears throat> crafting complex relatable three-dimensional characters i love this so very much because first off we are in a day and age where readers just want more from characters in books like they don't want the typical oh he went on a hero's journey yay they don't want that anymore because that's not real you know what i'm saying like that's not real, no. He's doing something behind the scenes that nobody knows, you know what I mean? So <laughs> give me a little bit of extra. And so <laughs> to do that, you gotta make the characters relatable. Like they can't be perfect, you know? The days of Tolkien's awesome heroes are over. There are no more Aragons, okay? However you pronounce it, Aragon. Mm-hmm, Legolas. 
there are no more there are no more of these characters in the world okay <laughs> readers want readers want a character with a little bit of oomph, if you will and so the first way um <laughs> creating relatable care are y'all with me by the way i do not have my little video thingy up so i can't see your faces <laughs> which is probably a good thing because i feel like if i was looking at your faces i'd probably be laughing and i wouldn't be teaching and that would be problematic since you can't hear us or see us yes we're all here and we got everything it's great yay because <laughs> if i see your faces i might get distracted and that would be pointless huh so <laughs> um three-dimensional characters number one <clears throat> three-dimensional characters speak to writing characters with many layers who here drop a one if you've ever seen shrek drop a one if you've ever seen shrek first of all shrek is a classic so if you haven't wow condolences because <laughs> <laughs> shrek is a classic um so y'all know uh <laughs> when donkey and shrek they're walking to go get Fiona and Donkey is getting on Shrek's nerves, of course. And they're talking about like emotions and how you gotta like peel back like an onion. Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Where he was like, oh, it's like an onion, you got layers and you gotta like pull back the layers of the onion. And Shrek was like, please shut up, right? <laughs> That's what, three-dimensional characters are they're an onion and they have layers that you just have to as the readers keep reading they think the character is one way and then they're like oh they're actually like this oh they're actually like this oh are you cake everyone loves cake cake has the cake does have layers cake has some great layers honey when it's made with the right filling I say take the onions and the layers, dip it in batter, deep fry, and enjoy some eating first. Wait, what? <laughs> that sounds like a southern thing. Jerry, are you from the south? <laughs> I feel like you're from the south. I knew it. I knew it. I'm like, that has, I'm like, this man has to be from the south. I'm in the south too, so it's okay. <laughs> Gotta love southern food. Gotta love southern food, man. I knew that. I knew it. <laughs> but um, that's three dimensional characters. The second, the gray. In most fantasy, the characters end up being gray, including protagonists. And so, <clears throat> what's awesome <clears throat> in terms of three dimensional, relatable characters, even the main character, even the protagonist, the hero. Like back in the day, heroes in fantasy, you knew they were the good guys. They didn't really make bad decisions. I mean, they had a mess up or two, but they were like awesome. You knew they were the hero, right? Nowadays, you don't know who's the hero <laughs> because at the end of the day, we can be good people, but we have the capacity of making really bad decisions, right? You're like, you're all with me. And so because of that, those are the kinds of protagonists, those are the kinds of uh, main characters your readers will want. Individuals with levels, right? Yes, they're the hero. Yes, at the end of the day, they're going to be the one to save the world or, you know, <laughs> to sacrifice themselves, whatever the case may be. However, they need to have parts of them where even you as a reader, you have to be like, yo, what's up with you? Like, can we make better decisions here? I don't understand. Right? <laughs> like, Get, like you don't have to make them completely gray if that's not your thing but i would encourage you to give them some levels where like some of their decisions are shady or like some of the things that they do um it affects people around them negatively like that kind of thing and then <laughs> um fantasy from the past contained a lot of mary sue's nobody likes that anymore first of all who here does not know what a Mary Sue is? Mary Sue is drop a one if you don't know what a Mary Sue is. Drop a two if you do know what a Mary Sue is. Okay, so we have a couple of number ones. Um, a Mary Sue, for just making it super simple, these are just perfect characters. 
like they can do no wrong no matter what you can be the girl that has no fighting skills you don't know how to read you have no idea how to like survive in this world and somehow you still end up being able to defeat like the most terrifying villain in the world and you also marry the high prince i just described the plot of a very popular series by the way <laughs> bonus points for you if you guess <laughs> if you guess what series that i just described <laughs> okay um but Mary Sue's are very okay. So who here drop a one if you ever watched Star Wars? Who here has ever seen Star Wars? Like any of them. Okay. Star Wars have a lot of Mary Sue's. TG said I could, yep, you get see who 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 said TG TG. We're here. We're right here. Okay. We're right here. <laughs> I just described the plot of A Court of Thorns and Roses, <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> baby, she can't do not near one thing and she still got the high prince. How, sis? How? You can't read, you can't fight, but but but, but we, how, sis, okay? Um, so, <laughs> um, some people would say, well, she went through a lot of trauma, so she's not a Mary Sue. Anywho, you can do no wrong as a character. So that is what a Mary Sue is. Readers don't want Mary Sue's. Okay, I need, I need some, I need somebody with some, some layers, some grit, some of some. You have faced life. You understand me? Okay, that's what we want to read about. Now, three-dimensional characters are relatable. Um, are relatable. Okay, like humans want to read about themselves, especially because y'all look. I don't know about you. I don't know what part of the world you're in. Okay, I live in the state of Georgia. <laughs> in the United States of America. Um, but before here, I was in Maryland when the pandemic hit. I was in Maryland. Um, the world is just going through a lot, okay? And so fantasy readers want to read something where they can kind of see themselves, but they like have hope at the end of it. Does that make sense? Like a lot of fantasy readers right now, they want to escape they want something that doesn't make their brain work hard they still want to feel all of these insane emotions like they want to be tortured as they read and then at the end they want to be like oh, that was amazing i need to read this again you know what i'm saying like they just want those feelings because real life is beating the brakes off of everybody okay real life is just pop pop everybody right now and so they need fantasy to escape into and three-dimensional characters help do that okay they're the characters who make the right decisions for the wrong reasons <laughs> and sometimes they'll make the right decisions and other times they won't which helps to create a solid foundation for complex characters not i hope you didn't think that i would talk about heroes and not talk about villains i mean come back <laughs> first off um don't hold it against me but uh i am a fan of a very good villain y'all can just take it up to the lord go on and say a prayer or two for me i am a fan of a very good like a well done villain where i'm like yo not gonna lie i probably would have made that decision too <laughs> <laughs> Kaylin said, personally, I like the villain more than the protest. Kaylin, right here. You and I are also right here, okay? Um, I just love a good villain, man, because a lot of the times they're right. You know what I'm saying? They're right. They probably shouldn't have made those decisions, but they're not wrong. <laughs> okay, so craft an unforgettable villain that's hard to love and hate. Because you don't want to love them, but ooh, it's so hard to hate them because they're actually right. Okay. A good villain isn't an antagonist that takes bad actions for the sake of being evil. Okay. Nobody cares if they're evil just because they're like, well, I'm bad. I'm evil. I want to blow up the world. Okay. But why? Who hurt you? Blow up the world for what? Why do I have to die? Just because you're upset. I just don't understand. Two plus two is not equally four right now. 
You know what I mean? Like nobody cares about evil for evil's sake, all right? A good villain does bad things for the right reason. So remember, <laughs> we talked about the protagonist, okay? They do um, good things for the wrong reason. Good villains, bad things for the right reason. Here's a prime example. First off, if you've never watched Marvel, I apologize in advance, but it's been enough like years, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Let's look at Thanos. Gotta talk about Thanos, guys, from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, so first off, who here, um, drop a one if you have seen Infinity Wars and Endgame? Drop a one. Oh, my people are in, are in fictionary. Hold on. Drop a two if you have not. <laughs> Drop a two if you have not. So I can pray for you. Drop a two if you have not. So we can just go on and send up some prayers for you. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. Um, you really should watch it though. Those films are fire. Okay? Fire. <laughs> um, so Thanos. Now... Thanos had us in tears in the movie theater, okay? I know. However, my man was unapologetic and he was unafraid to act on his beliefs, okay? A decision that served his own ideology at the expense of half the universe. <coughs> I did say half the entire ever-loving universe, okay? However, at the end of the day, the rationale of good villains make sense. So Thanos' whole thing was, man, look, we're all tripping, all right? Like, we have all these people, all these different species, and all these different planets. There's not enough food. There's not enough water. There's not enough resources for y'all to survive. If, but if we kill half of half y'all, the other half will be shot. And I'm not going to hold you. It makes sense. If we're running out of food and water, if half of y'all die, the rest of us survive. It makes sense. But it's a terrible decision. <laughs> it's a terrible decision. And so, however, um, Thanos 1000% follow through, okay? He was like, y'all tripping, nobody's gonna do this, no problem. I will kill my own child and make sure this happens. He was like, I'm about that life, okay? About that life. And so he killed off half the universe. And so <laughs> as terrible as that is, it makes sense. That is a very, very well done villain. Um, he is one of my favorite villains. Scar is actually one of my favorite villains too from The Lion King. Don't judge me. Do not judge me. Judge yourselves. Scar is one of my favorite villains. <laughs> I love Scar. Um, I feel like if he was human and he got some good therapy, he would have been better, but you know. Anywho, okay, and good villains, um, a lot of these villains also have messiah complexes. And so it's a very much... <laughs> the world needs to be saved. No one is stepping up to save the world. So I'm going to step up and save the world because y'all tripping. Um, that was very much Thanos. Like, I will kill the child that I love that I took from another planet. But anywho, that is neither here nor there. Um, Stephanie has a feeling would be cool. I, I'm not going to hold you. I would be setting it off. Okay. If I was a villain, I would be setting it off. <laughs> I don't think many people would survive. Um, we actually should not hope for such a thing. <laughs> because if I was a villain, I just, it would be chaos. It would be mayhem, pure havoc. <laughs> I would have good reasons though. I would have good reasons. So those are what you want to do in terms of like creating. Um, 
three-dimensional relatable characters. So good villains aren't whack jobs. Um, I like how you automatically assume you'd be in the living half. 1,000% I'd be in the, in the living half because I, I know how to survive, okay? <laughs> Y'all would not find me. <laughs> Y'all would not find me. You understand me? I would do my job and go find me a little planet and chill and live out my best life for all of eternity. Y'all would not find me. <laughs> <laughs> and they will be like, I'll pray for half, I'll pray for half of your souls, the other half has to die. Yep, y'all gotta go look, look so, so, somebody has to be able, willing to sacrifice. Y'all gotta go. <laughs> okay, because we need food. <laughs> um, I also heard the hero and the villain can be cut from the same cloth. Backstory of her. The hero, how do I grow from the hurt? The villain, how do I overcome by destroying the source of hurt? Innocent bystanders in it in Casa, 1000%. 1000%. That's honestly a lot of what it boils down to is um, I love how you actually mentioned that, Jerry, because one series that I have coming way down, I have like whole series completed in my head, y'all. I just can't write that fast. But it's done in my head, okay? Um, it, is, it is a series of an origin <laughs> villain story. Um, a villain that is in my present books right now, this series will show how they get there. And <laughs> these two characters, one of them from the, from the same thing that you're dealing with, it's very same thing. One will actually just grow from it. The other one will, uh, burn half the planet down. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why my characters have to like just do so much. Like what's up with y'all? Just burning down planets. Like what? Can we just like kick some rocks and then go eat a cheeseburger and just like burn down planets with angels in them? But that's what they do. That's what they do. <laughs> um, good villains are very smart y'all. Again, Thanos. They are very smart. They are methodical. They think about what they're gonna do. They think about who they're gonna do it with, how they're gonna do it. They have a method um, to their madness, if you will. And so that rounds up um, me talking about creating relatable uh, characters when you are writing your fantasy novel. Like that is a huge, important pillar. Um, and then lastly, again, we talked about this, world building is my mamba jamba crafting an immersive fantasy world it's so important y'all like it's so important the um what are the kids names again lucy lucy peter susan what was the little one that betrayed them all i forget his name i'm just talking about the chronicles of narnia what was the one who betrayed them all for, for, first of all, I can never say their last names. Parenti twins, uh, siblings. Um, Chronicles of Narnia. Anywho, the siblings, okay? Their story wouldn't be what it is without Narnia, okay? Um, Legolas, Aragorn, um, your hobbits, your dwarves, they would not be who they are without Rivendell. Mordor, like all the different, you know, the Shire, all of the different worlds in Lord of the Rings. And so crafting this world that you put these characters in to take your readers on this insane journey through their minds is so important. And so important. And so I've actually, um, written some points that you ought to think of fleshing out. It's not completely exhaustive, but it is some good points for you to flesh out when you are world building and we're gonna get there. So one of the greatest building blocks of an amazing fantasy story that readers adore and that they binge is the world building. Can we agree? Who, who actually, give me a one, if in fantasy novels, characters are your favorite, give me a two, if the world is your favorite. <laughs> And I'm going to tell y'all right now, too, like, 
the world hands down is always my favorite my characters are great but the world is always my favorite oh, okay i see four if it's epic fantasy yeah so if we're, like if we're dealing with like epic fantasy um thank game of thrones chronicles of narnia um chronicles of shannara like think of all these kinds of stories do you prefer the characters or do you prefer the world um one if you prefer the characters two if you prefer the world as for me i hands down will always choose the world um just because ugh, they're so magical guys like they're so good um and so the world com um, complements the characters like every single time um the whole point of creating the world as you do is so that it either helps or hurts your characters y'all with me it either helps your characters like the different elements in their in their world or it hurts them okay now building such a world can be difficult but here are some things to consider <laughs> if you've never thought about these different things before and yes um I flesh this out for every single world. <laughs> it's a lot, but it's important because like if you don't have the different elements in our own world, we like us living here doesn't really make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like there's really no real purpose if we're not engaging with the world around us. And how can you know? how to challenge your characters if you don't know what is challenging them. You see what I'm saying? So building out what's around them is super important. Number one, the magic system. Um, I can't insist enough that you need to flesh out your magic system to some kind of thoroughness before you start writing because you will write yourself into a hole like I know a lot of my friends where when certain of these elements were not fleshed out before writing magic system included they wrote themselves into such plot holes that they had to like either chop half the book or they had to just start the book all over again you don't want to do that <laughs> so that would be something I highly, highly, highly recommend you always flesh out. Um, do you lean towards hard or soft magic systems? Expand your question for me. I, do, I don't know what you mean by hard or soft magic systems. So Jerry, just write in the, uh, write in the chat for me, what do you mean by hard, um, hard or soft magic systems? So I can see if I can answer that properly for you. Okay, the second thing, hard magic, definite rules. So then soft magic means not, not definite rules, right? Is that, is that what I'm guessing? Got you, okay. <laughs> and so Catherine has a good question. So let me go ahead and address Jerry's question and I'll, I'll address um, yours, Catherine. Um, Jerry, it depends. It depends. Um, and it all just depends on how, what kind of novel I'm writing. Let me say it that way. It depends on what kind of novel I'm writing. So I have an epic, um, I got the idea for it, 2018, 2017, 2018. Um, and I will be releasing it this year. And when I say it's an epic, I mean, it's like gonna be like 700 something pages. <laughs> and there are a lot of different people groups and there are a lot of different classes of people like society societal classes and they all have different um they all have different magic and powers and um for those of you who don't know i write in the universe called eladel it is a universe of angels and so throughout the entire universe there are 12 defined ranks of angels and, and then there are like, and then I'll do like hybrids, like I'll mix, I'll have like angels who are a mix of, you know, two different ranks and so on and so forth. Um, all 12 ranks have their own specific kind of supernatural power 
And yes, I have hard defined rules. Um, what it can do, what it can't do, who gets it, how did they acquire it? Um, how do they break it down? Can they steal it from someone else? What happens if they max it out? What is the destruction of it? Like all those kinds of things. Um, I do have those definite rules for that. But then like if I'm writing a book um, for the Court of Dreams and Stars, I so for the, um, the transcendent, the transcendent in the book, that is a rank of angel transcendent, um, there were there were defined rules for her powers, but for the Ciels, which is a higher rank of angel, um, they had more of a variant power, and I wasn't sure what I necessarily wanted to do just yet with the power, so I allowed it to be, so I went, um, I allowed it to be a little bit more loose, if that makes sense, like I didn't really give it any um, definite rules in terms of this is what it does, this is what it, this is, this is what it doesn't do, that kind of thing. Um, so in that book, actually, if you guys ever read it, The Court of Dreams and Stars, one rank of angel, they, their powers are not defined, but then the other rank, the transcendence, their powers are defined. Um, so it honestly all just depends on what I'm writing. If I'm writing a romance, um, a romance fantasy, romantic, I'll talk about that afterwards. Um, I may or may not define so much the powers, but if I am writing an epic and I have like several coming out starting this year, going off the next few years, I have no choice but to have like those hard um, definite rules. Does that help? Let me know if that helps, um, if that answered your question. And then Catherine, you asked what are magic systems? So magic systems are just basically structures that you put into place for the supernatural powers in the world. Um, so for example, um, systems are just basically processes, right? And so um, I'll use Eladel for example. One rank of angel, they are called seraphim. They're like in the middle of all the ranks. My seraphim angels are elemental angels. What does that mean, Stephanie? Elemental angels, meaning they're, they have powers of fire, ice, water, glass. Um, one, some of them are not necessarily elemental because there are some that have the ability. Um, it's it's a it's a jewel like power where they're able to create crystals and gemstones and that kind of thing. Um, and so, uh, when I created that rank of angel and then I defined those powers, then I had to go ahead and put a system into place for it. What can it do? What can it not do? What are the tiers, the different levels of the power from its weakest to its strongest? Um, who has the ability to have it? All of these kinds of things, they create a system for it. That way, um, if you're not intending to have an, omni, um, an omnipotent uh, character or power, they're not using magic to like revive the dead or something when that should not be an ability does that make sense um like there's a system in place for the power for the magic there's a system in place that says hey you can do x but you can't do y and z okay um so that's what we mean by magic systems making sure that you know the um how you're defining the use or lack thereof of the ability that your characters have and then Kaylin, your question, I'll actually, um, I'll be sure to answer that once, uh, once I wrap up, because I'm almost done. So let me just like finish up this world building part and then I will definitely get to you. I do see your question though. Um, the second part is geography. Make sure you know, like, is this a tropical climate? Is this a climate like the Arctic? Um, is this a desert climate, that kind of thing? You wanna flesh out the government. Um, so how does that government look like? Is it a monarchy? Is it a democracy? Um, is it anarchy? You know, you want to define the government, you want to define currency, you know, how do people exchange, you know, if they want to buy food, if they want to, um, if they want to travel, that kind of thing. How are they, how are they exchanging currency? What are those currencies? Education, of course, culture, and that's, and culture is like a whole bunch of stuff. That's like, what you believe, how you dress, how you greet one another, um, roles in a household, um, the kinds of occupations and jobs, like culture on a holistic perspective. Um, 
fantasy creatures and monsters you, you know you're gonna are you gonna throw the Loch Ness monster in there <laughs> are you gonna throw a couple Chewbacca's in there you know what I mean uh, fantasy creatures and monsters and then festivals and holidays like are they celebrating solstice you know what are they doing and so and then we have legends and myths which is pretty self-explanatory and then rules and ethics you know what do they believe do they believe in the death penalty you know um how how are crimes handled in the world that kind of thing and so um, <laughs> this is not an exhaustive list by any means, but it will get you going with crafting an amazing world. Um, most of what you develop in your novel won't, most of what you develop in world building will probably not end up in the novel. However, um, I highly recommend it if you're trying to write a very vivid thing, um, story because you're able to put certain things in there that the readers can pick up up and it just opens up the story for them when you add these elements into the story okay like you may not just write all the flowers and the trees and all that but you put certain elements in there that helps them to see it to smell it to hear it to taste it to touch it that kind of thing okay um go ahead and pass this and so, and then um, two things, I'll just break these down overall because um, time is far spent. Um, when you're world building, there's also macro world building and micro. So um, by macro, we're just talking about the entirety of the world. And then we're also talking about the drivers of external conflict. And so as your character is going through the world, these are the outside things that challenge the characters. So that's macro world building, like the outside stuff, the government, how that affects the characters, um, education system, how that affects the characters, you know, the kind of neighborhood they live in, how that affects the characters, okay, versus micro, which is more of the minutia of the world that affects them internally, right, how they're beginning to develop, these are the things that affect their perspective and worldview, and so these are things that um, form who they are, um, in daily life like the little elements that will change them on the inside um, as they grow okay and then um pro tip only develop what is relevant in the novels that you will write for your world i say this because you can lose yourself in world building guilty like i go back and i look at some of my notes from the early years back in like 2015 2016 2017 and i just have pages of notes and i'm like girl you never put this in no novel like don't nobody know this why'd you spend all this time fleshing this out so like honey if it's not going to go in the novel and it's really not relevant don't waste your time on it you know what i'm saying like if you reach a point in the process where you're like yo I'm about to throw this whole manuscript in an in incinerator. Like, if you reach that point, you probably don't need to be working on that, okay? So only develop what you need and what is relevant. Um, these are some of my best tips for y'all, okay? So just give yourself grace through the process. Writing fantasy is a lot, especially if you're writing epic fantasy. I don't care what anybody says nothing tops epic fantasy unless you're writing sci-fi period and that's that's just where i stand like nothing tops it well historical might not well no because you can just research and have notes epic fantasy you got to make all that all this stuff up mm -mm. okay nothing tops epic fantasy unless you're writing sci-fi sci-fi folks child god bless y'all oh it's too much like sci-fi is just too much okay um, so give yourself grace, especially like in the beginning, I asked who here is writing a novel for the first time. There was a lot of you. Give yourself grace. There's a lot that goes in the process and you, there's no need to overwhelm yourself. So um, thank y'all. I'm at the end of my, uh, thank you for your patience with me. Hey, there was nothing to be patient with. You're awesome. I appreciate questions. Like I appreciate questions. Thank you for asking one. Um, thank y'all for kicking it with me. Um, thank you for inviting me to come talk with you guys. Shane and Christina, y'all are awesome. And I hope to be back um, to talk about some other stuff with y'all. But um, connect with me on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, that's where I'm at. I will, trust me, if you DM me, if you're on here and you have DM'd me, you know that I will respond to you. <laughs>
<laughs> I will just be chatting with you like we've known each other forever. So um, go ahead and follow. That's like the best thing to do is just connect with me on Instagram, follow me over there. And then everything is also at elladoll.com. I used to have, I mean, my personal website is still there, y'all. Don't go over there. It's not ugly. <laughs> it's not ugly um but just don't go over there because i don't go over there. <laughs> go to elladoll.com elladoll.com is where um all the things are and this is just the beginning of what it's going to be i'm going to be adding maps on there as i create them for worlds that get created um <laughs> I will be putting up character art up there so you can, so readers can see exactly what um, the angels look like because these angels don't look like what you think they look like. Um, and so like Elladel is the hub for like everything, blogs, how to get to the newsletter, which is another place that you should hang out with me. Um, Instagram and the newsletter are the places, especially the newsletter is where I like want to push out so much for y'all so thank y'all for hanging out with me um come find me on ig and then also hang out on elmville.com um there are a couple questions i'll take those before i hop off let me go ahead and like actually show your faces now um, since i can actually see your faces and be okay with being distracted i think there was who did i not get to kaylin here you are um we covered many cliches and tropes to avoid. Do you have a trope that you gravitate to? Friends to lovers. And that's just a personal thing because um, I'm about sick and tired. <laughs> okay, so I just have a little vendetta with um, my enemies to lovers friends. <laughs> this is something that I just talk about in circles all the time. Why do y'all have to hate each other? Please explain to me. Like, if you killed my mother, I will kill you too. Like, we're not gonna be, no, we're not becoming lovers, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> like, like, I need you to be my friend first, okay? You know what I mean? Like, go to a therapist, deal with your anger issues, and then come over here and let's be friends. <laughs> like, so, um, I definitely, gravitate to friends to lovers um i do let me see what are some what are some tropes that i'm throwing close proximity i don't know why i like my characters getting on each other's nerves i think that's what it is i think it's really funny when they get on each other's nerves so like i put them in very close proximity and they just irritate each other for like 300 pages you know what i mean it's great <laughs> so i gravitate to close proximity also and then happily ever after because please do not do me like game of thrones like i heard so i never watched game of thrones i never read game of thrones but i heard everybody dies what's the point what is the point if we're all going to die like i just i don't want to die so why is everybody dying? I need to escape into something happy. You know what I mean? So happily ever afters are my jam too. Um, let me see. Did I miss any of the cool songs? I love reading fantasy and novel. Okay, so Kaylin said I love reading fantasy and novels, manga. This gave me awesome insight. Yay! First of all, girl, manga is a throwback. I haven't, I haven't read a manga in years. <laughs> I haven't read a manga in a long time. Mangas are good, though. Shoot. Uh, if I had the skill, I would write one. I don't. <laughs> I don't. It is not my ministry. Oh, if it was, I would, though. Um, Angelique, this is fabulous. I can listen to you for hours. I will definitely be checking your work. Well, thank you. I'm glad. First of all, let's just praise the Lord. I did not have a coffee fit. Do you understand me? I was sitting here like, yo, I might have to go have me a little blow up a like blow my nose session but i did not have a coffee today. the lord has blessed y'all <laughs> because the way my throat was acting up before this call okay <laughs> okay the lord has been kind to you um love thy enemies you know okay <laughs> okay <laughs> love thy enemies as yourself you are right sir that is biblical <laughs> <laughs> I still don't like what I still like. <laughs> I still love lovers. <laughs> still love friends, still lovers. Um, you were going to talk about me. I was going to talk. Okay, give it up for Catherine, okay? Because she remembered. I did not. <laughs> Music. I am a huge, so I write um, to film scores, like 
y'all. Matter of fact, let me see if I can pull up my Spotify <laughs> and tell y'all I write to film scores. It is the only way I can get hold. First of all, my phone's gonna die. That's rude. Like who wants? How dare you ask to be charged? Um so <laughs> where are my playlists, hey? Um I have so I tend to actually create a new playlist per book just because I'm that person. Um <clears throat> I'll need to leave. Have a blessed day. Bye, Jerry. Be great. Live your life. Um, so I I create a new playlist per book, per se- sometimes per series, usually per book though. And then um, I like to do like film scores that are similar to the vibe of what I'm writing. Does that make sense? So like if I'm writing a water world, a lot of the music is going to come from Avatar. You know what I mean? Um, like that kind of stuff. I, one of the my friends put my friend put me onto this one. It's the latest um, Rings of Power, I think it is. That soundtrack, y'all. I wrote like I wrote a novel in like a week because of that soundtrack. Like <laughs> that soundtrack is so good. Like I turned it on and I was just like 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 I wrote a whole book it's so fast because of that soundtrack it's so good um video game music too I don't know if I've ever listened to video game music um girl pick up pick up a manga you're missing out you know I'm gonna let the lord use me in that department we shall see (laughs) my tbr is so hot you understand but uh video game music I've never tried that video game music I typically get so there's no words, right? I can't listen to music. It has to be instrumental. If I hear you like singing in my ear, I might start typing what you're singing and then we're gonna have a problem. You know what I mean? So I need it used to be like just instrumental. Now I um while I listen to um film scores, I also listen to um groups like what are they called? Like Audio Machine. Y'all know what I mean? Audio Machine, Two Steps from Hell, um, which two steps from hell I really wish they would like adjust their name but anywho um because I don't want to be two steps from hell you know what I mean two steps from heaven that sounds great um however I listen to them all the time (laughs) like they're really good um I get my ideas for romance novels by listening to a love song playlist on apple well that's a way to generate (laughs) just feel like I'm too I think I'm a little too visual to be, <laughs> you know, you gotta be careful. <laughs> you, you gotta know yourself. <laughs> know thyself to thyself be true. <laughs> I think that would be dangerous for me, but that is a very good, that is a very good method though. Um, y'all are awesome. I don't see any more questions, but yeah, that's my, that's what I was gonna say about music. I listen to full scores and um, other like epic fantasy stuff. And then sometimes I'm weird. I'll throw on classical music. It, it, it makes no sense. Like, why am I listening to Bach? Why? Why, why? why are we putting on Tchaikovsky when, like, they're about to go to war? That makes no sense, you know? But um, it happens sometimes, and it works. So I will say, if I need to cry and write a scene to make readers cry, I will throw on the Schindler's List playlist. Y'all those writing sessions will beat the brakes off me okay <laughs> like, gotta go like watch disney after that like animated <laughs> like, like, okay um yeah that's it guys <laughs> i hope i helped you <laughs> stephanie that was fabulous thank you so much for we don't have to go on mute now wait this is the fun part <laughs> 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 Thank you. I'm so here. Much. I'm here. <laughs> As you can see, we have a fabulous community here and super, super fun. Um, you missed the one word I wanted you to talk yes, about. Yes, the one word. So the one word is romanticy, y'all. Who who here has ever heard of romanticy? I want to know how popular this word has gotten. Drop a one if you've heard of it. Drop a two if you're like, girl, what? What's a romanticy? <laughs> drop a two if you're like child you're making stuff up because we actually i'm putting my two in there (laughs) 
So some of y'all have heard of it, some of y'all have not. So romanticy is literally romance fantasy. Um, now, I had to learn the difference between romance fantasy versus fantasy romance. So romance fantasy, the main plot is the romance, is the romantic plot versus fantasy romance, the romance is a subplot. So, I mean, like it happens, but like nobody cares if it doesn't type thing. Whereas a romance fantasy, if these two, if a little something, something doesn't happen with these two, we're gonna have a problem. I will like burn your novel type thing, right? So, <laughs> and so um, Court of Dreams and Stars is a romance fantasy, a romantasy. <laughs> um, it is very much so all about the romance plot. Uh, even though, because I love epic fantasy so much, there's war, you know, the kingdom is at stake. They might all die, but- Is it spicy? It, it's about the romance. Is it, it's, a, you know, it depends on your definition of stuff. So- That was from TJ, um, so I don't know what the definition is. I'm just Court of, that. Court of Dreams and Stars is fate to black, spicy. It's fate to black. Like there isn't like a whole bunch of stuff um, happening on the page. My friends though, um they 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 they're definitely like a five or a ten compared to me <laughs> all right okay they 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 like their spice okay i that's not my ministry <laughs> so mine they come together and then uh we're moving on <laughs> and so but that is romanticy and that is one of so like I, little by little, the more I write, like I have to like throw in all these different little genres in there. Cause I went from being a YA author to being a YA and an NA author to a YA and a epic fantasy author to now romanticy, throw romance in there too. <laughs> so, nice. just, where's the steam at girl? Not in my books. Uh, no play. <laughs> I'm playing. Play. Now, 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 now they have intimacy and all that. They're just not, boot knocking in the middle of war you know what I'm saying? first off what are we doing like you have more important things to take care of than you're behind you know so but um oh, you Stephanie, you're funny <laughs> thank you so much for today <laughs> really appreciate you coming into the community um you know a little shout out to lisa for introducing us to you that's really nice and um, I know everybody here totally appreciates all the advice you gave about writing a fantasy um, and look forward to come back. Oh, nice. Yep. So thank you and thanks everybody. And um, we'll see you at the next event.